guys welcome or welcome back to another episode of a better you by fernanda ramirez i am your host and i am so excited for today's episode i'm feeling super inspired today and for that reason i decided that we're gonna dive into a topic that i've been waiting to dive into for a minute i was kind of waiting for a time where i would feel super inspired and super called to film this episode because i have to give it my all you know but in today's episode we are talking about how to actually change your life this year a little self-motivation talk because I feel like I often get asked this question of like how can I go after my goals how can I just put myself out there how can I create my dream life like all of those types of things and I feel like because I am pursuing a career I guess that is like super not the huge you know being a youtuber or putting yourself out there is just like very different it requires a lot of believing yourself and not many people choose to do it as a job or they don't continue to pursue it over the past few years I've really nailed down what I had to do to change my life and create my life and I'm really passionate about this topic and I wanted to talk about it because I feel like it applies to so many different people whether you're trying to be a content creator or you're trying to start your own business or maybe you just want to be a more productive person or whatever the case may be. I have come up with a whole bunch of ways on how I think that you can take your life into your own hands and change it and mold it into whatever you want. We have a whole bunch of different tips and what to do on the back end, what to do when you're actually trying to achieve these goals goals and how it can be realistic for you to do this because sometimes there's too many self-help books online there's too many tiktoks like i i can tell you i'm one of those people that is religiously watching these tiktoks and it's just an influx of information on how you can change your life and it's kind of overwhelming so i've condensed it in a way that can be easily implemented into your life and you can take these steps and do it yourself and achieve whatever goal you're trying to do Typically, January is the time of year when we do a little self-reflection, we figure out what we want to change from the past, and we kind of figure out where we want to go in the next year. And I saw Trinity talk about this, so if she's watching this, shout out to Trinity, but she always says in her videos that just because it's not January anymore doesn't mean that we don't need to revisit our goals. And I feel like this time in specifically, and I don't know when you're listening to this, if this is in the future, but it is spring right now, and I feel like this is the perfect time to do one of those little self-reflections and just a little clean up on our goals and our headspace because we kind of tend to forget like even myself I had to look back at my vision board and be like okay what was the original plot of the story because I was just kind of living on autopilot and forgot what the intentions were and I think that's why January like works so well everyone's so motivated but if we do more of like a every three month little checkup on ourselves we can just all year round embody these intentions and attack these goals anyways that was the hefty little introduction and before we go into all the juiciness that is this episode I wanted to give a little bit of a recap on myself and actually guys you can let me know if you want to dm me on the instagram at a better you dot by fernanda or any way that you normally message me let me know if you guys like me to do a little bit of a recap on myself or like a little bit of a what I did last week how I'm doing in the beginning of my episodes because Usually when I listen to other people's podcasts, I kind of like when they do a little bit of a reflection or just like let me know what they're doing because I don't know, it's kind of fun. You get to see what they're up to and like what they're thinking, but I also don't know if you guys just want to go straight into the episode and you guys are like, girl, we don't care about what you did last weekend. So let me know if you guys would rather have that cut down or if you guys want to hear more of it um, or you like it, whatever. You guys can let me know for the next episode, but I'll give it to you for right now. But I am feeling so hectic right now, but very grateful. This weekend is Coachella, so I'm super excited, but I'm also very stressed out because I have a whole lot of footage and podcasts to pre-film. And now that I've added this podcast to my list of to-dos, it's basically like adding another job to my already existing job of doing YouTube full-time and all that kind of stuff. So it definitely is going to require me a lot of work these next few days to get myself all set up before I leave for LA and Coachella, but I'm super excited. Coachella was one of my favorite memories of last year, so I'm excited to do it all again. Um, I'll be going with some of my favorite people, so I know that it should be a blast. And as for this past weekend, I've just been doing a whole bunch of prepping for it. I always feel my best heading on to a trip, knowing that I worked out or that I ate really healthy the days or weeks leading up to it, as well as doing like a lot of self-care, pampering myself, maybe buying all the last minute necessities that I have. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've honestly been focusing a lot on my health. I've been drinking a lot of water. I've been cooking a lot at home. I've been trying not to eat out and trying to get good sleep because honestly, these bags under my eyes are horrendous and I'm trying to look good for this weekend so that's my focus right now 
Before we get started, I wanted to say, make sure that you give this video a rating and leave a little review. That would make me very happy. And uh, also, one more thing. Sorry, I'm really getting ahead of myself, but I, I just have to say it. Guys, this podcast, oh my God, it is doing so well. Better than I could have ever hoped. We are in the top 100 for Spotify. Uh, I think I was in the top 50 in the UK. Um, we're like charting all over the place, charting in the self-help category, charting in the personal stories category, as well as I think Apple's gonna highlight this podcast this week or in the next few weeks. And literally reading your guys' DMs is what motivates me because obviously I do this for myself and obviously I do this because I love it but even more than that I do it for you guys and that is just so special to me and it's so much more meaningful to do this job when it's not just for yourself and it's more of like my purpose is higher than myself if that makes sense my purpose is to help you guys and it's to help teach you guys or show you guys what I know or give you guys a new perspective and to know that it's also doing well is just reaffirming to myself that I'm on the right track and that what I'm doing is working. So honestly, thank you guys so much. I wouldn't be here without you guys. And yeah, time to feel inspired. Time to inspire you guys because I'm feeling inspired just talking about how inspired I am. Does that make sense? Let's get on into it. Guys, I hope you know this, but if you don't know this, I'm gonna retell you guys. We are the creators of our own life. We hold the pen, we write the story, and yes, there are situations that happen that are unfortunate, and I know that I'm very privileged, and I always kind of say this before I go into these topics because I understand that I am in a very fortunate and comfortable situation to be talking about this, and I don't wanna ever sound ignorant to the people that may have tougher situations than I do it's easy for me to say yeah you can create your own life when I have all this privilege and I know that not everyone is in the same position as me but I'm coming from a perspective of whatever situation you're in here are some of my tips on how you can take your life into your own hands and move forward and try your best to overcome any situation that you're currently in um I hope that makes sense you are the creator of your own life and from whatever situation that you're currently in from this point moving forward, you can write the story, you can change the narrative, you can choose what perspective you wanna see the world in and it will change the outcome of your life. Now, knowing that you are the creator and your future is in your hands, I think a really big thing that you need to realize and maybe you already do realize it, but it's good to have a little refresher, is that you need to take responsibility for your life. I read this in a book yesterday and I have it here with me. It is 101 essays that will change the way you think. And it was saying that you have to fully take responsibility for your life. You cannot wait for someone or something to change how you feel or how you act. I think remembering this and taking ownership and starting at this point is really gonna set kind of your beliefs in stone and then you can move forward from there because even myself sometimes you get stuck in this little victim mentality and you think that all these things are happening to you and that you're unlucky or things aren't going your way but you need to realize that how your life is right now for the most part is based on your habits and how you've been living your day-to-day -day life. So if you're not happy with the situation that you're in right now, you may be a factor for why it is the way it is, but that's not to like judge or to feel bad about yourself. It's more of just to kind of be realistic, really be aware of the situation of like where you're starting from and move on from there. And I think this is one of those moments where you really need to show yourself self-compassion at whatever stage you're at, because it can be a little bit hard or you know kind of a little hit to the stomach to look at your life and be like oh I'm not happy with where I am right now and realize that the reason why it is like that is because of yourself I understand that that is not the easiest thing ever but you know just acknowledging okay this is where we're starting where are we going to move on from here if you want to evolve or go to the next step I don't think it's possible to do that without having some shadow work done and I would love to make a full episode on shadow work not that I'm a pro or that I'm a freaking therapist or something but I feel like I've done a lot of research on it and I've tried to do it myself for the past few years and I feel like it's really helped and I've gotten to the point where I'm not saying that I've gotten rid of my shadow, obviously it's still there, but if you are aware of it, you can consciously make changes to your life or to your actions to avoid falling into your shadow. And you may be asking, what is your shadow? Because I, here I am talking as if you already know what this is, which maybe you do, but maybe you're just like, Fernanda, what are you saying? So I have here that doing shadow work is the process of exploring and addressing the darker hidden aspects of our personality, emotions, and behaviors. These are aspects that we tend to ignore, 
deny or repress because they are uncomfortable, shameful, or challenging to deal with. So what they're saying is it's like hidden things about yourself that you aren't necessarily familiar with because you don't even want to be familiar with it. Like it could be your feelings of like jealousy that are deep hidden inside of you. They're like rooted inside of you. Maybe it was because of some like traumatic thing you had when you were younger or maybe someone said something to you one time that you can't let go of yet or someone did something to you or someone betrayed you in some way and it made you feel some way it's like that kind of inner self that you don't show out to the world it can be like the thoughts that you don't even want to say out loud it can be the thoughts that you don't even consciously think about but by acknowledging and embracing our shadow we can gain more self-awareness self-acceptance and personal growth which honestly i think is super important if you want to change your life and move forward and like you know really take your life into your own hands because You'll have no issues where like feelings start arising that you don't know where they came from or anything. You'll you'll be able to identify like things that trigger you. And also I just want to add that just because you know your shadow self and you've realized maybe your patterns that aren't so good or certain things that trigger you just by knowing it doesn't mean that it's going to all go away it doesn't mean that you're going to be solved and you're going to be this like perfect human being but I think by acknowledging it or just being aware of it you can be conscious when you start acting out of a place of your ego I think the word is but like out of this shadow self you'll be like oh shit I'm doing that thing like why am I acting like that and you'll be able to identify those and hopefully try to change them or spot the patterns before you act out of that place a specific example that I want to bring up that I think matches with the theme of this episode would be if you had these limiting beliefs that were like, oh my God, I can never achieve that goal that I want. I'm never going to be in the place that I want to be. Why would I even try? There's no point in trying. Someone is better than me. Maybe you can like look within and be like, oh wait, did somebody when I was younger tell me that I was never going to amount to something? Did somebody when I was younger tell me that I can't compete or that I'm the worst or was there someone in my life that was always trying to one-up me etc etc like I feel like by acknowledging your limiting beliefs that come from your shadow self you can acknowledge them and move forward and that's like the whole healing stage honestly I've never been to therapy but I think a lot of therapy is kind of figuring that out and if you can't do it yourself I think going to therapy or something can be super helpful because they'll help you like uncover all these like hidden things about yourself that you didn't even know once you have your shadow self then you can take your responsibility and be like okay we know the shadow we know what's not working how are we going to move forward here? The next step is believing in yourself. Now, I know for myself, I grew up very fortunate that my parents were always kind of boosting me and telling me, you can be whatever you want, Fernanda. You can do anything you put your mind to. You just need to try. You're going to do so good. And growing up with that mindset, even now, I feel like I'm always like, yeah, why wouldn't I be able to do that goal that I want to do? Like, why wouldn't I be able to achieve this milestone? Why not me if this other person got it? And I know that that mindset may not be as easy for everybody depending on how you grew up, but you need to get that mindset and have this growth mindset. You need to believe that you can and that you will. But obviously just believing that you can doesn't mean that you're actually going to do it. You also got to put in the work. You cannot be lazy and you need to remember that things that that are meaningful and that are rewarding take time and you're not going to get it overnight it's going to be a long process but it's going to be so rewarding when it's all done and if you can believe in yourself and show yourself that you can do things it's going to build so much confidence within yourself because you're going to realize damn I really can do anything I put my mind to and I really can accomplish anything that I say I will which again not only is going to bring you self-confidence but even other people will build you up and will give you a confidence boost so it's just like confidence all around knowing that everything you say does happen and will happen speaking from personal experience my career and where I am right now and by career I, I know that sounds so kind of silly because my job may be like social media I know for a fact that wouldn't have happened if I didn't believe in myself and I didn't believe in myself before anybody else something that I've learned throughout this process is that at the end of the day you only have yourself and yes you can have other people believe in you and you can have other people cheer you on but if you don't believe in yourself things won't get done things won't happen things won't change and I remember when I first started my YouTube channel I had a lot of people kind of not that they were like laughing at the situation but they were like oh so I saw your video like you're starting a YouTube channel like kind of okay and honestly I didn't even process that that they were not believing in me because I had such a strong belief in myself and ever since I first started my mindset was kind of like well if other people can do it why can't I do it and even now when I see people that I used to know like from high school or something they'll always ask me like oh did you did you think this was all gonna happen like did did you know this was gonna happen and 
I feel like they're expecting my response to be like, oh no, like I didn't know this was going to happen. I, I like, it was not what I was expecting. But honestly, my response would be like, I mean, yeah, I put in the work. I believe in myself. I don't see why I, I wouldn't be here. So actually I, I did kind of expect it. And I feel like even people can be a little bit thrown off by that response because you maybe sound a little bit cocky, but it isn't being cocky. And honestly, I wouldn't be here without having that mindset. I actually have a friend of mine who wanted to pursue something on the side as kind of like her passion project, as well as the job that she already had or the school, or whatever she was doing. And she was telling me that she was kind of nervous to pursue this like dream of hers because she was like, well, like I want to try, but like, why me? You know, like obviously like I want to try and I'm going to put my best effort into it, but there's just so many people in the world that like, why me? You know, like there's so many people that could be better at this you know, thing that she was trying to do. And the girl that I'm talking about, if she's watching this right now, you know who you are, queen. It made me kind of angry when she was saying this or like kind of like, oh my God, stop it. Because this mindset is just like, it's just not the one, you know? You need to realize that no matter how many people there are in this world, there's always gonna be room at the table. There's always space for everybody and you are 100% not gonna be where you wanna be or not even close to where you wanna be if you aren't even gonna put yourself in the position to be at the top. And even that mindset of thinking, why me? Why would I get to have my dreams come true if so many people wanna have their dreams come true? You need to switch that around and think, why wouldn't it be you? Literally, why wouldn't whatever you wanna happen, why wouldn't it work out for you? You can actually choose to believe that mindset. It's true, it's facts. It worked for me, so I don't know why it wouldn't work for you. But if you don't actually believe it, why not just say it to yourself, you know? Like, what's the worst that can happen? What is the best case scenario if I put myself out there and I believe in myself and I just really try for this goal? Because honestly, I think you'd be surprised. And there's that whole saying that hard work beats natural talent every time. So if you're already blessed naturally, you've already got a one up on people. But if also you put in the work and you believe that you can and you're constantly trying and working on your craft, I think it's a pretty safe bet that whatever goal you're trying to be or, or whatever lifestyle you're trying to change to will happen for you. I'm going to make another reference to the book, 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think, because I read this yesterday as I was in the sauna, and it really inspired me. This is 100% credits to Brianna Weist, I think is her name, of the author of this book. And it was saying that the single most powerful and liberating thing any of us can do is to choose to believe that everything is here to help us. We either see ourselves as the victim of what happens to us or as someone given the opportunity to change, grow, see differently, and expand. So either you have this feeling that you cannot change the life that you have and that you're stuck in this situation or you can think that everything on this earth is here to help you, that you have a purpose and that you don't have to sit in this discomfort or this on and off believing that you can, believing that you can't. Just believe that you can and believe that you are the luckiest person in the world, which goes into the lucky girl syndrome, which we love to hear about it. I honestly love this sentence and I know it was trending on TikTok a while ago, but it really does stand out to me and it really does resonate with me because it's such a positive mindset to have that lucky things just happen to you. And it is something that you can constantly reaffirm to yourself. You can say every morning when you wake up, I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I'm the luckiest boy in the world. Lucky things just keep on happening to me. Or when something really good happens to you, be like, oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. Like, thank goodness that happened to me. I'm so grateful that happened to me. And constantly picking out good things that happen within your day or things that were super lucky and thinking that that was meant for you. I remember my friend Rosie, she can... I'll name drop her but whenever something good would happen to us she would always say that was meant for us that was a sign and you know maybe some of it wasn't a sign maybe it was just maybe it was just the earth and we're just living in it like for example we're walking around and the sun came out and she'd be like oh my god it's a sign but honestly that made me really happy every time she would say it it wasn't something that I was already thinking of. And then I would hear her say it and I was like, you know what? You're right. It is a sign. It was for us. Like, for example, you're driving. You see 1111 in front of you. You're like, oh my God, it's a sign. My spirit guides are talking to me. Or maybe you're walking around in a store and somebody offers you a flower. You say, oh my God, that's a sign. I'm so lucky. Anyways, we're kind of going off track here, but just kind of believing that you are lucky. Things happen to you and everything on here is for you. Now to actually change your life and make real changes, there's a few things that I think you're going to have to put up with. Number one being 
you're going to have to be okay with putting yourself out there. You're going to have to be okay with changing day-to-day stuff in your life and switching what you already know to something different, to something new, and that is going to change the reality of your life. But having that said, you also need to be okay with failing and being cringy. This is easier said than done. I think a lot of times we don't try new things or we don't want to try to get out of our comfort zone because it can be kind of scary to try something new knowing that you're not going to do the best you can and especially if you're like a perfectionist or you're used to doing things that you know you're not used to getting outside of your comfort zone I feel like trying new things and knowing that you may fail is like a super scary thought one that might actually completely derail you from the path you're supposed to be on or stop you from doing what you want to do but you know if there's anything I learned from gymnastics it is that as long as you try it is okay to fall down if you fall down you get up and you try again and I'll give you a little side story here I had an experience when I was in gymnastics and I did gymnastics for like 10 years growing up but I had an experience that I think about (laughs) pretty regularly for something that to many other people maybe around me while it was happening is probably just like that happened only a few times why do you still think about that but I actually thought it was a very big life lesson for me and it is that When I was like 14 years old, I was doing a back handspring back tuck on the beam. If you don't know what that is, I don't know how to explain it to you, but it is a kind of a hard skill to do on the beam. The beam is like four inches. It is like quite tall. It goes up to like your chest area. It's super skinny and you're doing backflips on it, but it was a connection. It was a back handspring, back tuck, okay? Back handspring, backflip, connected. That skill, I could do it. But when I tell you I probably fell... Eight times out of 10, I'm not lying. I would fall almost every time. I actually think I fell every single time I competed it, which was kind of traumatic. It was kind of an ego bruise. And I low-key have PTSD from it because it was so embarrassing to fall. And fall. And fall. And fall on video. And fall in front of family. In front of all of your coaches. And fall until you crotch the beam and you um, have bruises all over your legs. It was super humiliating. But I remember telling myself, Fernanda... As long as you keep trying, you're not going to get in trouble. Your coaches can't yell at you if you keep trying. Because what are they going to say? Are they going to say, try harder? I already am trying. So I became really good at failing. And I think that is actually a life skill that has really gotten me to where I am today. Because I'm okay with failing. I'm okay with trying something. And if it doesn't work out, okay, slight embarrassing, slight cringe, take the L and move on. But I think a lot of people should try to learn this if you're not already practicing it or good at it. Even if you fail, even if it's embarrassing, even if it sucks, get up, try again. Try it from a different angle. Try it from a different perspective. Try it with different people inspiring you. Try it with a different morning routine, etc. I'm kind of speaking like metaphorically without actually pre-planning how this metaphor would turn out, but you get what I'm trying to say. Be okay with failing and be okay with being cringy, especially in the field that I am, which is like social media. A big thing is putting yourself out there. If you want to get to the top or do well, gain an audience, like really do the best you can as being an influencer or in social media or a YouTuber, a podcast host, whatever it may be, one of the biggest things is that you need to be authentically yourself. And that can be super scary because you don't know how people are going to perceive you. You don't know how people are going to take it. You don't know if people are going to judge you. But you need to be okay with being cringy because the people who end up on top, they wouldn't be where they are today if they hadn't had those cringy eras at the bottom. If they hadn't had those like mini fails, those little slip ups, but that's why they're at the top because they believed in themselves regardless of what they looked like on the outside. And another thing that I want to add, especially in this field that I'm in, is when you are self-employed, you need to try really hard. And sometimes you feel like a tryhard. <laughs> I can say this from firsthand experience. This is going to be a really specific example because I know not everybody is pursuing social media. But the fact that it's social media and you're watching, I guess, your competition. And I say that in quotations because obviously nobody's your competition. But you're seeing the other people that are in your field, like mutual influencers, whatever. You see them posting their highlight reels. And me on the back end, especially when I first started and I was sending all these emails, I was putting so much effort into my content. I was editing for hours and hours on end. I was like scouting where all the events were going to be for fashion week. 
I was figuring out what events I could place myself into. I was like, holy, why am I putting in so much effort? Is everybody putting this much effort? Because I'm only seeing other people's highlight reels. But then I took a step back and I was like, you know what? What is the harm in being a tryhard? If you are trying hard at something, it is because you honestly, you have faith in it. You believe in it. You see the potential in it and you see the potential within yourself so just know that if you are trying to change your life and you're trying to upgrade to this new reality of yours or you're trying to pursue something that you've been really passionate about or that you've always wanted to do just know that it's okay to try and if anything you should try because pairing belief and mindset with hard work and dedication and all that kind of stuff is going to ultimately get you to where you want to be. Put in the work and remember that it is not always going to be easy. It is going to take hard work, but changing your life is hard work. It's not going to come easy to you and it's going to be super rewarding once you do level up. Now in terms of changing your life, you guys know this and I think that this is a given, but to brush up on it, I think the biggest thing that you can do is setting goals and intentions for yourself. I assume that most people do this, but I feel like there's also a whole bunch of people that don't do this regularly. And regardless of who you are or what job you're in, what age you're in, you should be doing this like year round. Especially I think when we get a little bit older and we're not in school and we don't have like somebody telling us like, okay, what is the next thing you're looking forward to? You can kind of forget that you should be setting goals, but not only will this help you level up to the next stage of your life or be where you want to be, but it will kind of give you purpose and drive to be your best self because sometimes you're doing all the right things and you're working hard, but you're like, what am I doing this for? You know, that happens to me sometimes, but I feel like having goals and working towards something that's even bigger than yourself really is motivating and helps change yourself. So some of the ways that I like to set goals and intentions in order to get to where I want to be is making vision boards. And I made one at the beginning of the year and it was like a hard copy version. I basically went on Pinterest. I found a bunch of pictures that inspired me, what I wanted my life to look like. And I cut them out and I stuck them onto a big canvas. And I've been doing this for the past three years. And I know that it works because I've achieved many of the things that I've had on my vision board. But I did this all and I have it in my office and I always look at it to remind myself of the things that I'm trying to accomplish. This year, my mom actually made her first vision board, which was super cute. I was so happy for her because we don't live together obviously anymore, but she watched my video and she was like, you know what? I'm very inspired to make my own vision board. So she cut up a whole bunch of magazines and she has hers and it's super cute. So I highly recommend if you don't have one to make one. And even though it is like April when I'm filming this, it doesn't even matter what time of year you're making this. You don't have to wait till 2024 because that is like, that is way too long away. You know, we don't have time for that. The time is now and the present is now so do it now if you can but another way is of course setting goals in your notes I've realized that making monthly goals is what helps me achieve my goals the fastest just because I'm constantly refreshing them I'm constantly checking in on them and it's super satisfying to cross them off once they're done one thing to note is as I'm saying I do this like every month I make sure that my goals are super achievable and attainable and little by little getting to where I want to be. So for example, when one of my biggest goals was to get a million subscribers, I did not say from day one, my goal is to get a million subscribers. My first month maybe was 10K. Then the next month it was 15K. Then the next month it was 20K. And little by little, I got to my ultimate long-term goal. So be cautious of that. Don't go crazy with your goals. Don't even give yourself so many goals to the point where it's overwhelming and you feel overpowered by them. Because at the end of the day, they're supposed to be like little stepping stones for you that inspire and motivate you rather than kind of taunting you and giving you anxiety just looking at them. I highly recommend reading the book Atomic Habits if you haven't already. I've only like read half of it, but it's super inspiring and super motivating to read it because it tells you all about how to really achieve your goals through habit stacking, which is when you stack a bunch of habits together and it kind of becomes an autopilot little sequence we can say so that you can add more day to day for example if your goal was to drink more water and go to the gym you can say that every time you drive to the gym you have to drink a full water bottle on your way there and that's like two habits stacked into one and then little by little you stack on more 
But I think that is a super helpful tip. And a quote that I want to say is that the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. So if you can change things in your daily routine and take control of your day by creating this perfect routine that works for you, it doesn't have to be like a perfect one that you find online, the millionaire 5 a.m. morning routine. Although, you know what? I bet you that one's pretty good. But it doesn't have to be that. It can be something that works with you, that you like, that you can take control of, that inspires you and motivates you and you slowly add new habits into your life. Your future will change and I think something to note with this also is the saying that nothing changes if nothing changes so myself even can get into these little phases where I'm in a slump I'm in a little sad phase maybe I'm handing in things late I'm waking up late I'm going to bed late like all these horrible things are happening and I'm just thinking like oh my god like I need to do something different I have to remind myself and acknowledge that girl nothing is going to change if you keep doing these horrible habits like if I actually want to change my life and I actually want to do something better or be better than the version that I'm being right now I have to change something so the daily routine is when that comes into hand. And another thing I want to say here is that if you spend even like a month perfecting your daily routine, you can try like a whole bunch of different morning routines or a whole bunch of different habits. You can see what truly works for you and when you're like most inspired to do the most work. For example, for me, I have to do like my work in the morning or when I'm like close to waking up or when I'm ready because that's like when I'm most inspired and like that's what I've realized So trial and error, but figure out what works for you and try to change your day-to-day routine. The last few ways on how you can change your life and write your future is by letting yourself evolve. A lot of times we're stuck to our own ways because we're very comfortable with where we are and we're comfortable with the identity that we've given ourselves, And we're also comfortable with the fact that that's who we've been to other people for the past year, two years, three years and sometimes doing a big drastic change you're kind of almost scared to do it because you're like oh my gosh what is other people gonna think of me they only know me as this past version of me but you need to forget about that you're allowed to evolve you're allowed to change the perception of you and you're allowed to create a whole new version of you There's a few last things that I want to touch on and as I said in the beginning of this episode, since we do have the power of changing our future and our life, we need to remember that we are the ones in control of our thoughts, what we say to ourselves, what type of content we consume, and who we surround ourselves with. And I don't want to go too in depth because I feel like for the past like few episodes, I've kind of been talking about this idea and it's crazy because literally all these topics go hand in hand so it's kind of hard not to overlap here but Just be cautious of what you're thinking about and know that you can change those thoughts. The other day, I was so sad for some reason. I was listening to sad music. I was looking at the gloomy sky and I was like probably pitying myself. I was like, oh my God, it's so cloudy. I'm so sad. Like, uh." And then all of a sudden I was like, you have control of your own thoughts. Shut up. And I put happy music on. Even though I didn't feel like it and I was kind of still in a slummy mood, I was like, I am grateful. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so, I'm so happy. And I like was like fake smiling for like a minute because I think somewhere it said that it's like proven to make you happier if you smile for a minute or something anyways I just changed my thoughts and I automatically felt better and I was thinking to myself why was I even sad in the first place like that little switch just made me feel so much better and obviously if there's like a big situation around you that is actually like sad traumatic you can't change it definitely feel those emotions and it's not so easy to kind of snap out of it but more of those overthinking self-doubt uh irrational thoughts that make you feel kind of down just know that you have the power over your thoughts and you have the power to switch them put yourself in a happier mindset okay now i want to leave it off with one last thing i feel like i'm going out of order here but the last thing i want to say is that whatever you're doing if this is a new job if this is a new hobby a new sport a new routine that you want to try out, whatever it is that you want to kind of change your life into, as long as you are 1% better every day, you are doing a whole lot better by the end of the year than when you started. The more hours that you put into something, the better you're going to get. There are some people that you may look at that have what you want and they have the lifestyle that you want. Maybe they're really good at that thing that you want to be good at. And it's so easy to sit in your position and be like, oh, they're so much better than me. Like, why do they have those skills? Why does it come so easy to them? 
But honestly, the reason why they are where they are is because they've put countless hours of work to get to where they are. There's so many ways that I feel like we can tangibly take action and like work towards this. But at the end of the day, to wrap it up, I think what you can take away from this is to remember whatever you're going through right now, you have the power to change your future and you can. It's so possible. And if nobody believes in you, I believe in you. But you need to put in the effort to believe in yourself and actively make decisions and changes in your life to get to where you want to be because nobody's going to put in the work for you and if all these other people are achieving what you want to achieve you cannot sit in pity or sadness and be like oh they have what I want because so do you you have the potential and they don't have anything that you don't have the only difference would be the effort that they put in and the belief that they have in themselves and again Maybe they were blessed growing up with parents or family or friends that really believed in them and built them up and maybe you didn't have that so it can be a lot more difficult for you but acknowledging that, acknowledging your shadow and saying okay well I'm going to take responsibility for my life, I'm going to change my life from this point forward and I'm going to choose to believe in myself, I'm going to choose to think happy thoughts, I'm going to choose to surround myself around people that uplift me and bring out the best in me and I'm going to choose to believe that I am the luckiest person in the world that good things are always happening to me they're always around me and everything on this earth is here to help me mic drop on that one okay i love you guys i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did reminder to give it a rate leave me a review and follow me at a better you dot by fernanda on instagram and subscribe to the youtube channel oh and one more thing one more thing one more thing sorry I'm dragging it on, but if you're still listening to this point of the video, please DM me three affirmations because I know you guys did this last time with things that you were grateful for, but DM me three affirmations about yourself. And if you're kind of confused about what an affirmation is, it is any positive statement that resonates with you. So like, I am beautiful. I am smart. I am happy. I am positive. I have a great body. I'm super smart, etc. Okay. Send me three affirmations about yourself and I will feel so happy. I'm going to read them all. Anyways, I love you guys. I'm going to go have lunch. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. And I love you. See you next.